Hello everybody, today we're going to go over gene expression. So why is this relevant? Well, the steps involved in gene expression and regulation are a favorite of the USMLE Step 1 because many human diseases arise from problems with these mechanisms. In this lecture, we will perform a brief overview of the process of gene expression all the way from DNA to functional proteins and name important diseases that occur due to problems in each step. This will help you understand the big picture before we go into details in future videos. So, let's get down to it. Gene expression is a multi-step process by which the genetic code or DNA is used to make functional proteins that accomplish the requirements of life. Functional proteins are essential for proper functioning of the human body and a large amount of diseases are believed to occur because of dysfunctional or absent proteins. The production of functional proteins is very important. However, the ability to control and regulate which proteins are made, where and when is just as important. This process is known as regulation of gene expression. This regulation of gene expression is also believed to be responsible for various diseases. For this reason, many mechanisms exist to regulate gene expression. Gene expression can be broken down into five basic steps. First, transcription. Two, post-transcriptional modifications. Three, translation. Four, post-translational modifications. And five, functional protein. The first step. Transcription is basically the production of RNA from a DNA template using an enzyme called RNA polymerase. RNA, if you recall from the previous video, is a type of nucleic acid similar to DNA. Various proteins and enzymes work together to determine what part of the DNA to transcribe, when and how much. Proteins which function to control which parts of the DNA are transcribed are called transcription factors. There is usually a special sequence in the DNA that transcription factors can identify and know which part of the DNA to transcribe. These sequences are known as promoters. Red syndrome is believed to occur due to mutations in transcription factors. We will talk more about red syndrome in later videos. So here we have a simple illustration of the transcription process. First, an enzyme called RNA polymerase binds to a specific part of the DNA molecule called a promoter sequence. It is important to recognize that the occurrence of this entire process is heavily regulated by special proteins called transcription factors, and the way they work is that they can bind to certain parts on the DNA called regulatory sequences and make it either more difficult or easy for RNA polymerase to bind DNA and do its job. Once RNA polymerase is allowed to bind DNA, it starts making an RNA molecule from the 5 to 3' prime direction, which is complementary to the DNA sequence on the strand being read. So if we were to draw this out, we can imagine that somewhere in this area there is a special sequence called a promoter sequence. RNA polymerase, which is this enzyme right here, can come in and bind the promoter and start making RNA from the 5 to 3' prime direction. However, it's not so simple. There are transcription factors which control this entire process. Now, the way the transcription factors work is very complex and there are many different mechanisms. However, there are generally two different types of transcription factors. There are activators and repressors. Activators are transcription factors which increase transcription, while repressors are transcription factors which decrease transcription. A common way that the system works is that, for example, you could have a type of repressor that can bind the promoter and effectively block access to RNA polymerase. When this happens, there will be no RNA expression. You can imagine that there will be the opposite, an activator which could come in, bind the repressor, remove the repressor, and all of a sudden, that promoter is available for RNA polymerase to come in and make more RNA transcripts. Again, this is an oversimplification, but what, what you need to know is that there are two types of transcription factors, activators and repressors. The DNA strand made during this process contains the specific information needed to make a protein. However, the RNA strand must first be processed in order to make that RNA strand readable. That brings us to our next topic. Post-transcriptional modification describes the modifications that mRNA must undergo in order to become readable. There are three basic RNA modifications required to make mRNA, or mature mRNA. These modifications include addition of a poly-A tail, addition of a 5' prime cap, as well as removal of introns. Once this has occurred, mature mRNA is able to leave the nucleus and be transported into a ribosome for translation, which is the process of using mature mRNA to make a protein. It is important to know that Duchenne and Becker muscular dystrophy are believed to occur due to issues with splicing which is the process of removing introns. We will talk more about these disorders in future videos. So if we were to draw this out, we can imagine that these proteins right here make up the various components of the spliceosome. The spliceosome is not a single protein, but rather a collection of proteins. So the way the spliceosome works is it makes cuts at the edges of the exons, 
it removes the intron and then reconnects the exon so you have a continuation of exons. Next you have the addition of a poly A tail. A poly A tail is basically a series of adenosine nucleotides, several hundreds of them. Then we have the addition of the 5 cap. The 5 cap contains a lot of guanosine and specifically modified guanosine such as methylguanosine. Now you don't need to know that but what I want you to know is that the purpose of the 5 I'm sorry, of the poly A tail and the 5 cap is to add stabilization to the RNA. Once inside a ribosome, the process of creating the protein from amino acid monomers can begin. It is important to realize that proteins which are destined to stay in the cytosol of the cell will be made using cytosolic ribosomes which are basically free-floating ribosomes. On the other hand, proteins destined to be excreted or reside in the plasma membrane or other membrane-bound organelle will be made in endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes. This is because the endoplasmic reticulum serves as the starting point for the mechanism which cells use to send proteins and other large molecules across the plasma membrane. Another important area where this is relevant is the pharmacology of certain antibiotics. Antibiotics such as macrolides and aminoglycosides inhibit translation in bacterial cells. In this image we can see all the major elements of translation. RNA is read by ribosomes in the 3 to 5 prime direction which is the opposite direction in which RNA is synthesized. Once mRNA enters a ribosome, the nucleotides are read in groups of threes called codons. A group of three nucleotides will code for a specific type of amino acid. Another type of RNA, called a tRNA, is involved in this process. tRNAs act as amino acid carriers. tRNAs also contain a three nucleotide sequence called an anticodon. Normally, the anticodon binds to the codon and the correct amino acid is inserted. The sequence in the anticodon is complementary to the sequence in the codon. It is important to recognize that ribosomes are also made up of a type of RNA called ribosomal RNA, or rRNA. Ribosomes have three areas where tRNA can dock. The acceptor site, or A site, the peptidyl site, or P site, and the exit site, or E site. The A site is where the next tRNA incorporated in the sequence will bind. The P site is where the amino acid that has just been incorporated to the protein binds. And the E site simply refers to the exit where the empty tRNA will leave. This entire process requires amino acids, tRNAs, mRNA, ribosomes, and energy in the form of GTP and ATP. Just like RNA, new proteins must be processed and modified in order to function correctly. Proteins can undergo three different kinds of post-translational modifications. They can have other types of molecules attached to them such as carbohydrates, lipids, or other proteins. This is accomplished by forming covalent bonds between the protein and the new molecule. They can also be cleaved to form smaller proteins, or they can be folded using specialized proteins called chaperones. This entire process occurs either in the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, or cytosol. Here you can visually appreciate all the different kinds of post-translational modifications that proteins can assume. The addition of a short group of carbohydrate monomers, or oligosaccharide, can function to tell the cell where to send a protein. For example, mannose, a type of carbohydrate monomer, is added to proteins which are destined for the lysosome. It is a problem with this mechanism that leads to eye cell disease. We can also see other types of modifications such, such as a disulfide bond. This will occur when you're trying to connect a protein to a different protein. You can also have cleavage. Cutting a protein can sometimes activate that protein's action. Lastly, you have chaperones. Chaperones are special proteins that help proteins assume their final folding pot pattern or configuration. Lastly, even if a protein is functional, it must be sent to the correct location in order to perform its functions. The ways by which proteins are sent to different locations is called protein trafficking. Broadly speaking, a protein can take four different paths. It can stay in the cytosol, be excreted into the extracellular space, become part of the plasma membrane, or be sent to a membrane-bound organelle such as the lysosome, mitochondria, or Golgi. Now, what I want you to remember is that the last of those three requires a common pathway. That is, they are first made by ribosomes in the ER, and then from the endoplasmic reticulum, they are sent to the Golgi. And then in the Golgi, they are sent to their specific location, which might be the extracellular space, as in a hormone, the plasma membrane, such as a plasma membrane receptor, or a membrane brown organelle, such as the lysosome. So in summary, successful gene expression requires the ability to create proteins, regulate protein expression, and send proteins to the correct location. 
Issues with any of these pathways can lead to diseases such as Rett syndrome, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, eye cell disease, and various others not named here. So that's all. See you in the next lecture.